how to get from this to this with a reverse balayage in under an hour. So today I'm going to show you how to do a reverse balayage and it is so simple and so easy and it's good for those clients who you know, at the end of summer, they're all over too light and too bright, and they want to add a little bit more depth back in the hair, tone it down a little bit, and still keep it really nice and lived in. I'm going to showcase a new color by Moroccan Oil. This is in their color Calypso, which is their liquid demi permanent, and it's the 682, which is again their gray violet series. And I'm going to show you how it really neutralizes the underlying warmth. And it's really good for some of those clients too that have that naturally neutral base color or that have a little bit of ash in their hair and they actually want to blend that in naturally. So I'm going to mix this one to one and that is mixed with the color Calypso with their gloss activator. I'm just going to show you what I did on some color swatches. So I try to find the darkest color swatch that I had and I put the 682 on it. And as you can see, how well it actually neutralized. There are many ways to approach this, and I'm just gonna do the easiest way that I would normally kind of do on my clients. There's one where you can apply, which I'm gonna be doing today, where you apply the color at the base and some low lights throughout. You can also, if you're doing something with a highlight and a low light mix, you can actually apply all the low lights first and then go back and root shadow them and gloss them. But I'm just gonna do it quick two in one. That way you can get your clients in and out of the chair in little time. So I had my assistant pre-lighten my mannequin for me. And I told her to make sure she still adds a little bit of the lines of demarcation in there. Cause I just wanna show you how well this color line covers, even though the color Calypso, which is their demi-permanent, is still a translucent line. But I'm gonna show you what this is all gonna look like when we're done. So I'm gonna start by applying everything kind of in the root area and I'm gonna be doing some of the root and the low lights at the same time. And for a second here, I'm just gonna grab all this hair that's toward the face. I'm gonna push that away and I'm starting more toward the back of the head. So anytime I'm covering lines of demarcation in the hair, I wanna make sure I go past the line of demarcation or where the lightener starts. So that way I have two seamless colors marrying together. And before I add my low lights, I'm gonna make sure I just do a quick comb of the colors to make sure everything is nice and clean section. So this is also important when you do your consultation with your client. Does your client still wanna be nice and light and solid on the ends, or does she wanna break that up within to make sure the depth goes from the root all the way to the bottom? Half the time underneath, normally they are darker in general, so sometimes I like to do a combination of both. And so a lot in the back here, I'm gonna pull that low light all the way through, but as I work my way to the top and on the side, I'm gonna actually stop about three quarters of the way and leave some of the ends just a little bit brighter, especially around the front of the face. And then what I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be using these reusable mesh strips these are probably literally two years old and it's so nice because you can just reuse them and not having to waste your money on getting new ones. They are by Framar. And these are gonna act like my foils, but for the low light. So what I love about them is they're so durable and I can pick up more sections within the hair and just lay that over these. So I'm literally just gonna assess where the hair falls and I'm going to start and pick up some really deep, thick sections. So I kind of want to see where that's going to lay over top of the blonde section.
the back compared to the front, I actually like to drag my collar a little bit longer, more of the root melt, so that way the depth is in there, and that way it will give the chance for the pre-light and highlights that's already in there to kind of pop over top of that depth. And sometimes a little bit of Lola's can go a long way. Now, if my mannequin here was very thick, very dense hair, I would actually take a lot of slices versus weaves. But as you can see, because this is a mannequin, her hair sparses out toward the ends. So I'm just gonna go in and alternating my weaved pattern sizes throughout her hair. Again, I do love to work with more slices or if your clients wanna go a lot darker, slices just provides more coverage in the hair. And then on this top section right here, I still want the depth to lay away from the face and more underneath. So what I'm gonna do is that piece that was really bright right in her crown area, I melted to about three quarters of the way. And then I'm gonna leave a little bit of that blonde, of those blonde ends out. And then I'm just going to ever so slightly take my brush and make sure I melt and marry that in. Now for the front, remember, ask your client if they want it a little bit brighter, acting like more of that money piece. Usually a lot of my clients like a little bit of brightness around the face, so I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna melt too much around this area where they pull their hair back because they wanna see that brightness. Remember, I'm just gonna tap around her hairline and not drag my color too far in. I'm gonna drag it a little bit more down here, kind of more on a slant. So again, keeping the brightness around the front of the face and a little bit more depth going away from the face. You can also change your sectioning pattern too. So since I want less depth around the front of the face, I'm gonna pick up a really big section here and then a very small section more in the front. 
So as you can see, smaller in the face, but just enough to break up that blonde, more going away from the face. And then again, I'm gonna be leaving a little bit of that wand out on the ends, just taking my brush a little bit and combing it through so that way the ends where the dark and light meet aren't spotty. Now this section right here, I'm gonna go all the way through the ends. So that first section here, around the face that I did, I left a little bit of the ends out. This one, I'm actually gonna drag it all through, throughout the bottom. And then this top section here, I'm also gonna leave the ends out. Again, a little bit chunky going away from the face. And then I'm just gonna go a little bit thinner around the face. So as you see that, a little bit more bolder and deeper, a little bit thinner going toward the face. Now you can also change the pattern here as well. You can stop about halfway and start to blend it in, or you can literally go all the way down about three quarters and blend it in. As I get to the top, I still want her to feel bright and blonde because half the, half the times our clients, when they're really blonde, they still like a little bit of that blonde in the hair. They don't want to feel overpowered by the dark. So as I work my way up, I'm going to start going to that halfway mark and then blend it in and keeping the light pieces out. And then this last section here, I can leave it as is, but then I'm going to take a very, very fine weave right on that top part and go all the way through the ends, but very fine. Now we're gonna wait 20 minutes and then we are gonna go on to glossing her existing blonde. So what we're gonna be doing is an ounce and a half of clear and just a half an ounce of the 1082, again in the gray violet series. Now, the job of clear is not to dilute the color, but basically it helps slow down for the tone to reach the actual hair. So I don't need to mute her blonde out so much, but I still want a little bit of warmth, but I just actually wanted to show you by using the Gray Violet series, how it can definitely tie in and cool everything down by just adding a little bit.
I actually love to add a lot of clear to my formulas, especially around the hairline, because that total direction, it takes slower to get to where it needs to be. So say for instance, if you have all these thin, finer hairs around the money piece area, and you know that tone is just gonna suck up all of that, maybe say if you're using a cooler tone um, to cool any existing warmth in the hair, I either mix up a completely different shade, or what I'll do is I'll use the same shade that I'm using all over, but add a mostly clear to that. So it just takes longer for that tonal direction to hit that front hairline. So we're gonna comb all this nice and through, making sure that everything is completely saturated. And again, I will probably leave this on maybe just for five minutes. She's already nice and light and bright. We really don't wanna cool her down too much because we did add that cool um, low light color throughout. So I still want a little bit of brightness, but this is gonna to tone down a lot of that existing warmth, even by just adding clear to it.